This is what's left of one Taylor County man's workshop after an EF1 tornado blew through Campbellsville. The Louisville Cardinals are one step closer to winning this bad boy, their first ever national championship trophy. March 13th marks the second anniversary of Brianna Taylor's death, and today dozens of people gathered for a peace rally at Jefferson Square Park. We're just an hour away from tip off, and I don't know if you can tell behind me, a lot of red and black flooding to the KFC Yum center. A lot of these cards are ready for this big time matchup. Matt, walking out of the house this morning, it was miserable. Exactly. Humid as could be. <laughs> Will it ever end? I know. <laughs> well, you're here to answer all of our questions. The good news is it is coming to an end. At the age of 93, Joby Hall has passed away, but not before fulfilling a lifelong wish as he once was and continues to be an icon for Kentucky basketball. You want me to fight? When we hear Kentucky's greatest world heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali pops into head, or Triple Crown winner Secretariat. But after hearing the musical stylings of the Eastern Kentucky native, so will the name Tessa Lark. Music was just my jam since the dawn of time, since I can remember. The Grammy-nominated violinist uses her bluegrass roots to inspire her style of play. Usually like a fiddle. So mandolin was actually my start. I played Boil and Cabbage Down. That was my first tune at age four. Brought the mandolin to show and tell in kindergarten. And then I started the violin at age six and a half. Declared myself a violinist at age seven and have never looked back. Mark captivates audiences with a combination of new sounds. Much like what she'll be performing with the Louisville Orchestra with a piece from Wynton Marsalis. One second to the next, he'll change styles completely. He'll go directly from a tango to a habanera to a ragtime dance to a hoedown, and there's actually a big battle between the orchestra and the soloist, especially in the last movement, which is really fun. Topping it off with playing a Magini violin made in 1600. I just fell in love with it from first sight and first playing. Um, it's It's got a really dark and warm sound. A lot of violins, they're extremely brilliant and bright sounds, which I love, but I'm, I'm more of a, you know, if I could do it over again, I might actually be a cellist or a bass player. I love love the, the, the bassy sound. But for Lark, it's more than just being center stage. It's about the chance to give back to the next generation of musicians. I wasn't able to see many concerts because I was out in rural Kentucky. They were hard to get to. And so it's the most meaningful thing for me to come back to the place where I grew up and where I learned about music and take my studies from wherever else I've been in the world and, and come back and give back. And exactly what inspires Lark to keep performing. Reporting in Louisville, Aaron Wilson, Spectrum News. Strength lives in Hindman. That's clear to see. The community has banded together following the devastating floods. And Robert Cook put all five of those kids on his back one at a time, and he swam them through that swift water. Got my, got my uh, niece and two nephews to safety, and my uh, my two youngest children. That that man saved my family. That's not County Central High School football coach Vance Hurley praising the heroic deeds of his neighbor. And this season, the football team is playing for their town. One, two, three, family! Just do it for them. You know, we got a whole team on our back, plus we got a whole community on our back. You know, we're just going to really try our hardest so that way they can have something to grab onto this fall. But it will be without one key player, Aaron Mick Crawford. We're back there working, doing drills and stuff, and I look around and Mick's not there. You know, that's the, that's the toughest part. It's, cause it's like... It becomes real all over again. There you go. A war pick at KCCHS. Go. Being a lineman or a war pick, as I like to say, you have to put the team above yourself. And Mick did that both on and off the field. Me and him got really close this year before everything happened. And I mean, he was one of a kind of kid. He'd take the shirt off his back for you and do anything he can. Let's go. 
The 18-year-old, who would have been a junior, passed away after helping flood victims in his community. It's different. It's like a part of the team is missing. But as a team, we all know that he's there, he's with us every game and he's watching over us. So this season is more than just winning. Well, it, for me, it was like, you know, I know I gotta take this serious and I can't take anything for granted anymore. It's about healing. We take that jersey and his helmet with us to every game. We're gonna take it to every game. And he's always gonna be with us. Mick's gonna be right there with us the entire time. He's not, he's not going anywhere. And giving their community hope. If we get the community buy in and they want to come watch us and have something to do, that, that's a win for us, either way. That things will get better. Reporting in Knott County, Aaron Wilson, Spectrum News. <laughs> Carving wood takes a special kind of person. And well, Harley Darty is that guy. Well, I used to build custom furniture. And I liked the hand carving part on it, the filigree, the, the ball and claw feet and that type of thing. That required chisel work. Darty has turned his passion into a full-time job. For 17 years, Darty has traveled across the country, creating extraordinary wood sculptures with just his chainsaw. I just got hooked on it because here we got blank tree, blank canvas. I get done with it, we've got something that resembles something. From bears to dragons to his most recent work, a bald eagle. Darty will take on just about any project, as long as it meets his number one rule. It must be family friendly. Every animal, except for maybe an oddball uh, thing like a, a shoat. A shoat is a, in the mink family, but I've done martens, minks, beavers. If it's native, I've carved it. Even covered in sawdust after a long day's work, you'll always find Artie right where he belongs, with a chainsaw in hand. Well, you know, one of the things is, is what we do, you practice and you practice and practice. But the main fact of it is, it's a God-given gift. A gift that keeps on giving. But it, it's neat to hear them, you know, all excited and it ain't even done yet. And I'm like, if they like it now, they're going to love it when it's done. And keeps others lining up to get one of their own chainsaw sculptures. Reporting in Louisville, Aaron Wilson, Spectrum News.